Hello everyone and welcome back to the Core Gaming Channel. Today we're going to be starting a brand new campaign playing Xenonauts 2, a strategy game that puts you in charge of a multinational military organization tasked with eliminating extraterrestrial threats. If this sounds anything like XCOM 2, it it should. I mean, it, it, it is very, very similar. And I'm very excited to start playing it here. So, I've watched this game kind of grow over the course of time, and way back when it was kickstarted, I think in 2018, it was a really cool uh, sequel or successor to the original Xenonauts. And I believe that the intent is, and, and you'll need to quote, don't quote me on this, but uh, I believe that the intent is to improve upon Xenonauts, but also remain true to the idea of it. So, the present time in the game is about 2009. Uh, you'll see this in the intro here, but the, the Cold War is still going on, uh, the Berlin Wall still stands, and, and generally we're in a not very fun place compared to where we were in 2009 uh, in our version of reality. So, um, you'll find out, and, and I'm, I'm sorry if this is a spoiler, but aliens, that's the reason. So, anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have here in the main menu. So there are uh, mods that they will support, however we don't have any, we're going to be doing a blind playthrough here. The roadmap. So this game is in early access, and unfortunately, um, that that means that it's not completely finished. And realistically, I, I respect the fact that games can be released in early access, but when you're charging forty dollars for it, I am going to be as as harsh as I need to be because I'm considering it a full fledged game. If you're charging me all that money, I get to treat it like a full game. So. I apologize if that bothers anyone, um, but that's just my perspective on it. So, in any case, uh, of those things that they do want to have complete during the early access period, they have the tutorial done, VIP missions, heavy armor, uh, rescue soldier missions, an improved cleaner story, probe UFOs, and ambush missions. However, you can see that there are a ton of things that they are still interested in doing and uh, working on. There are very, very regular Updates, you can see we're on milestone 2.21. Uh, this was from the 5th of January, and at some point we may experiment with the, well, experimental branches, where they're continuously releasing new changes to the game before they go into the official milestones. We'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later. Either way, let's go ahead and take a look at the options here. Uh, so we do have different campaign options. I, I mean, realistically, these are just a set of presets, so if you look on the right side, Recruit, Soldier, Veteran, and Commander are all just representations of different sets of command options. So, other than that, uh, we're going to be playing on Veteran here. We will be naming ourselves... Uh... Something. Actually, you know what? This is just the name of the campaign for the save, so it doesn't really matter. We'll, we'll name it that. Uh, we'll be turning off the tutorial, and then we will be doing as much Iron Man as possible. I will be accepting any deaths we incur. Uh, the only hesitation that I have is I'm always scared when I do Iron Man that if something gets soft locked, especially in these sometimes early access games, it can be kind of catastrophic. I said somewhat of the same thing when we did our Battle Brothers uh, campaign start, but I'm going to do that here. We'll do our very, very best to maintain something, but if there's a crash or something like happened in Demon Hunters and, you know, maybe I took a little bit of extra damage or something, I, I apologize. Any case, that is going to be uh, all for right now. I'm looking forward to get started with this campaign. I have a lot to learn. So, let's go ahead and get into it. The year is 2009. The world teeters on the brink of nuclear war. Tensions between capitalist and communist nations are at boiling point. Every opportunity for peace has failed, as if an invisible hand inexorably steers humanity towards annihilation. We Xenonauts know the truth. The dark forces poisoning our politics are not human in origin, and we must protect our planet against this extraterrestrial threat however we can. After years spent gathering information on an enemy that few believe exist, we are finally ready to strike back. The war for our future begins now. Ah, Commander. Good of you to finally make an appearance. Welcome to our backup facility. I had a command room and a cache of emergency supplies installed a while back. No getting around the fact that our new home is a derelict nuclear bunker, full of 60s era junk though. Hope you're fine with cold showers, cold food, and, well, cold everything. That's hardly our biggest problem. 
My recent studies suggest once estimated mass is factored in, extraterrestrial activity appears to follow a mathematically predictable pattern. More precisely, exponential growth. And we're nearing the end of the curve. Lovely. In plain English, <sighs> the UFOs arriving in our skies will soon to begin will soon begin to increase rapidly in size and or quantity. I doubt it will be long until the aliens launch a full-blown invasion. Great, as if things weren't bad enough already. How long do we have? Weeks. A couple of months at most. I suggest you make the most of them. Alrighty. So sorry guys if you can hear the dog in the background. She's very excited and I'm watching her today. Uh, please choose the location for your starting base. Hmm. I've always liked Europe. Uh, what about Rome? Let's let's put it in Rome, and we will call it the Core. All right, I don't know, I don't know if this is a good spot to start or not, but uh, I figure Europe, lots of spots around here, and uh, yeah. So one thing that was slightly important. They mentioned having a backup base. So in the campaign tutorial, you actually find out that you were above ground and then the general that was in charge, I don't, I don't know if, um, you know, I don't know if he was in charge of you or working with you, but either way, he betrayed you and you had to scuttle the entire op operation. So you are now in a position of very little um, and you're supposed to be doing a lot here. So let's take a look here at what we have going around. Our main base, we have a hangar with a troop transport and an interceptor. We have, excuse me, a storeroom. We have two sets of living quarters, a lab, a workshop, generator, and our radar array as well. This is also the access lift, which is the elevator that gets us up and down. We have 12 soldiers, five scientists, five engineers, Detection radius of 5,700 kilometers, research speed of 25%, survival chance 10%, healing rate, blah, 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 blah. So, there's a bunch of stuff here. We're going to go through it as we kind of make our way through the campaign. Uh, but right now, the important thing is uh, our power capacity, our living capacity, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it right now. As far as the research, we don't have anything that we start with. That's one of our very first quests. Uh, and, and this guy's just a jerk. <laughs> the door was closed for a reason, Commander. He's so nice by saying commander, yet so so mean. Uh, in our workshop, we can craft different things, so ablative plating and an auto cannon. We can also craft different uh, equipment here. So the Angel Interceptor, the Skyhawk dropship, and then let's take a look at our troops. This is going to be some of the most important stuff here. Uh, so each one of these has unique uh, distribution of skills and abilities. So for example, we have Vera Smirnova, who at uh, at this rank of level, I want to say level five, right? No, I, I maybe that's oh, that's just the number. Yeah, it's just the number within the the Skyhawk. Uh, so each of these, uh, the the rank is actually how skilled they are. So each of these guys has a different health time unit, uh, which is if you have not played this game before, time unit is how units act, and so each action requires a certain amount of time units. And unlike something like Demon Hunters or XCOM, where they're discrete units these are very very minute units so it could be as much as you know 45 time units which means that this person can only do one action someone else who has 60 might be able to do that action and then move away or throw a grenade or or so on and so forth so you can see how that is really really important so you have uh, some guys who can move very quickly and some guys who are a little bit slower accuracy is accuracy of the weapon strength is uh, the carrying capacity recoil control and also how far they can throw things so like a grenade uh, reflexes is reaction fire or overwatch avoidance and so people with higher reflexes are less likely to trigger that reaction fire and that's one of the things i'm not quite sure of even after looking at the tutorial is how overwatch is calculated but i'm sure we'll find that out through the course of the campaign and then lastly bravery bravery is essentially the resolve uh, on other games where uh, if you have a higher bravery, you're less likely to get panicked when something bad happens. So either way, we want to start looking at our loadouts here. And I think that's what we're going to do for a lot of this first mission. We're going to see where people are going to fit in. We're going to make sure that all the loadouts look good and go from there. So first and foremost, I think we do want to take a look at uh, people with our highest accuracy. So we have Corporal Ilya Markov, Corporal Huang Ruju, 
and Sergeant Vera Smirnova. So all of these have 60 or more accuracy. And I think realistically, it's probably going to be these two that have sniper presets assigned to them. I really like the sniper preset for these guys because both have low HP, relatively low strength. Uh, Smirnova has really low reflexes, um, but uh, I, I mean, realistically, I think just based on the fact that they both have low HP, I want to give them high accuracy. So, Huang Ruju, however, has high reflexes, high accuracy, high uh, moderate strength, moderate time units, and good HP. So I think she is actually going to be a shotgunner. And I think we need to go over to the armory. So that's going to be... Let's see... Riju, yes. So let's go ahead and see what you got. Shotgunner. So I guess actually that's that's the assault class, right? Yeah, the assault class. So you're going to be an assault. So you have a shotgun, stun baton, I like that. Uh, demolition charge, extra ammunition, and perhaps we could give them something else. Maybe a rebreather. So a rebreather would be good as it prevents them from taking damage from gas, which I think makes them. Is that, that I think that makes them immune to stun from the gas grenade. Either way, uh, we are going to be bringing a not a, a second gas grenade, but rather a flashbang grenade. So let's go ahead and update the roll equipment with that. And then hopefully that doesn't take too much. So a soldier's carrying capacity. This is something that's important uh, to pay attention to. The carrying capacity of a soldier is how much they can equip before they get minus time units. So for example, right now, uh, Huang has 55 time units. If I decided to pop a uh, another shotgun in there, she would then have a minus 12 time units. So we're going we're going to limit that. Um, all right, next on the docket here. Let's see. Who has the... I want to say, who has the highest reflexes? Ilya Markov. Uh, I mean, you're kind of dangerous. You know what? Honestly, I, I feel like I might be playing a little bit more than I need to right now because I don't know enough about these guys to actually make a distinction. So, for example, like you, you're terrible in uh, you're, you're just terrible accuracy. So I think instead of having you be an assault, I'm actually going to have you be a shield. Wait, what? who was it? Who had that? I have a Nova. You also have really, really high health. And good time units, good bravery. Yeah, you're definitely a shield. I have a Nova. Okay. Uh, perfect. Gave you 38 bravery. Wait. Do we have two Ivanovas? Am I crazy? Nika Ivanova and Anna Ivan. Okay, we do have. Yeah, we have two Ivanovas. I see, I see. Nika is over here. And you are going to be a shield. Now, shield already has a uh, time unit penalty. Um, so 44 down from uh, 60, I believe. Yeah, 60. So it's a little bit of a pain, but that's okay. Now, I also want to take a look at... Um, I want at least one of our guys to have a grenade launcher. And I figured that probably doesn't matter too much who has... You could probably get away without having too much uh, accuracy. So maybe like Yuki. Yuki has good time units. Yeah, let's go ahead and make you a, gren a grenadier. So we have a grenadier shield and assault. Let's go ahead and drop. Probably don't need three snipers. So maybe we drop Markov and pick up our grenadier. We're going to go with that for now. 
This is all this is all a little bit uh we're working with it. But other than that, uh, we also do have our aircraft which are already equipped and our Skyhawk which has uh, nine troops available and our Xenopedia which we will uh, potentially look at in the future. Either way, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have around us right now, nothing. So we're going to go ahead and speed up the game until we get a little bit of something happening and it looks like our very first thing has happened a tactical mission atlas base we must temporarily clear out enemies or clear our enemies out of atlas base so we can recover the scientific data and supplies we need to continue the war against the aliens it's an elimination mission in the facility biome three days to uh, begin and victory is new research options loss is game over all right let's go ahead and launch the combat team then this will be interesting. This will be very, very interesting. So this will be our very, very first mission here. We do have a two snipers. We may not need two snipers. Maybe we switch. How many assaults? We have two assaults. Ivanova. Now we had you. Did we choose to make you a sniper? Because I wouldn't mind having you as a... A rifleman here. That's quite nice. Because you have good time units, good health, or good health, good accuracy, low strength, but that's probably okay. Let's see, what do we what could we potentially use instead of that? Anything? Not right now. But that is okay. We also don't have a gunner roll. Uh well, we do have a, a gunner roll, we just don't have any. Uh, gunners outside of Kravchenko. So that might be something that we look at in the future as he is relatively low accuracy, low health, somewhat. Bravery could be improved, but for right now, that's okay. Let's go ahead and launch the dropship. Let's not overthink this too much and uh, we'll see what we got once we land over in, it looks like, the middle of Africa. All right, Skyhawk 1 has reached Atlas Base. Let's commence the tactical battle. So one thing that is unfortunate I did notice in the tactical, uh, or the, not the tactical, but the tutorial, is that it is a little bit difficult to tell who you're working with uh, from time to time. So I'll try to improve and go with, I guess, who's best for each thing. I don't know. We're, we're going to work with this. It's alpha. It's my first. We're, we're playing blind. Everybody's okay. That and for the graphics, it does take a horrendously long time to load either way commander this is a critically important mission we left a lot of important things behind when we evacuated atlas including years of research data you need to clear the facility of hostiles so we can recover what we need the main cleaner forces have already returned home so hopefully it won't be too hard if you run into the general well this isn't the time for sentimentality he's not on our side anymore Alrighty, so we have our shield let's go ahead and put our shield over here we have a, an assault. We have a second assault. We have our grenadier. Um, let's put you behind cover. Sniper one. Do we have any? Do we have two snipers? No, we don't. Uh, but that's our machine gunner. Let's see, I suppose we can move you over here. We're just gonna do a nice even split. And then we will I think we're gonna end the turn. I don't really know if uh Oh. I don't know if exposure to enemies gives us a, a new turn or how that actually works. So let's see. Ah, interesting. Weapons room. Okay. Let's see. enemy spotted okay so it looks like no that does not give you anything additional here Let's see smoke grenade who has a flash grenade anyone no looks like we only have smoke grenades but we could do a fragmentation grenade that would Let's 
0% chance. Oh, 92% chance to hit. Let's go ahead and hit that frag grenade. And then you, I'm assuming we're gonna take some, let's see, who is our sniper? Sniper's over here. Let's see, do we avoid? Oh, hey, we do. Perfect. So you need to shoot here, or we could do a snapshot, which has 68% chance. Excellent. Now I'm curious here. What do they have? A cleaner submachine gun. Submachine guns are similar in rolls to rifles, but way less, and inflict less damage. As well as 20 ballistic SMG ammo. That might actually be quite nice to support. Let's see, how much does that... That puts you over... Insufficient time units to move. Okay, that's fine. Perfect. Let's move you. Move everyone else. Not quite sure how this is going to work out, but we're going to give it a shot. M249 saw guy needs to be a little safe here. Let's go ahead and move stun damage. One of our units just suffered stun damage. Looks like you may. Either way, uh, let's go ahead and end the turn. Uh oh. That's not good. <laughs> Oh, you missed? Not great. Oh, shield's gone. Oh, crap. No damage. I'll take it. Uh, we definitely want to pop a grenade in there. So, can you hit that far? Yes, you can. Let's toss that. All right, and then a snapshot. You can't do that. Worst case scenario, though, we shoot. Okay, that's fine. It's all good. Let's move here. So these guys, I am fairly certain, already use most of their stuff to get through. You have good armor, and I think, so you have the option to do two snapshots. Excellent, and these guys are dead. Very nice. All right, so lesson learned. The enemy will move, and it does not help you to be, uh, to, you know, wait, I guess. All right, enemy spotted. We could do a burst. 20% chance. Has a relatively high chance to hit that bed. We could also do two normal shots at 36% chance. Nice! Instant kill. Okay, and it looks like nobody else is in here. That's good. Happy with that. Move you. Let's open that up. Can you hit that guy? No, you cannot. Ah, shoot. Okay. That's fine. And you have a 67% chance to kill. Excellent. Let's open up. This is, this is much more freeform, I, I think, than I anticipated. Not that I'm complaining in any way. It's just fascinating. All right, now, who still has movement available? Our sniper does. 
Sniper can move over here. Also, our Grenadier, who hasn't done anything thus far. You know what? Actually, that was a really bad idea. Let's go ahead and switch to your pistol. And who else is available? Rifleman, let's get you moving. M249 saw. Let's just have you eyes open there. All right. Okay. Nobody's there. Interesting. Oh, so the, the doors just close. All doors close anyway. Okay, that's fine. Makes sense to me. Let's let's get this. Okay, wait. So you are overweight now, but that's okay. Actually, you know what? This might be perfect for you. And then we get additional ammunition. Yeah, I like this. I like this a lot. Okay, there is a guy there. And let's get a burst fire. 22% chance, 10 rounds. Yeah, we'll get him down. Excellent. Actually, you know what this reminds me of? This is probably a... Uh, a base assault mission, if I had to guess. That actually makes a lot of sense. All right. Oh, the general. You! I recognize you. All of you. Why don't I remember anything about you? It doesn't matter. I will not allow you to interfere. All right, so it looks like, yes, in fact, he is unfortunately uh, having a bad day. Okay, so your grenade launcher. Aimed shot. If we do a regular shot... Hmm. Now, unfortunately, I already forgot how to... Nice. Ow. Oh, they all shot back. Ouch. Hey, get out of there. Oh, crap. Okay, well. She's... She's gone. May she rest in peeps. All right. So you have the ability to shoot. All right, and the general goes down. All right, so Overwatch works in that way. Color me surprised. Truthfully. Um, now, let's see, do we want to... I mean, do we need to bring the corpse back? Okay, 30% chance, 30% chance... Here, let's throw a, throw a smoke grenade. Yeah, so I'm assuming that that gas mask does prevent them from getting stunned, uh, which is nice, or which would be nice, I think. All right, so we do also want to move here. Oh, you can't move there. Okay, everyone else is pretty much good. Let's see. So you can still move. Ballistic rifle, normal shot. 37% chance. Good damage. Of course, we did already smoke that off, so potentially less damage than before. And there's a guy in there. Okay, end the turn. Bad decision. Bad decision on my part. Alright, lots of misses, though. Absolutely a ton of misses. Which we will take, without a doubt. Okay, let's do a burst shot. And then a snapshot. Nothing there. Ivanova, you're not dead yet. You only have one shot, though. Excellent. I say. Probably not excellent. Let's go ahead and move you here. And we can definitely kill you with that. Excellent. Okay. Whew. All right, we're learning. We are learning. I'll tell you that much. Demolition charge. I think we're going to toss that. 
And then we can... Can we snapshot to you? 23%. It's, it's not bad. Okay, maybe, maybe a little hesitant. Sniper. Let's get a scoped shot. Nope. We don't want to do that. Ah, oh, man. Learning new things every time I play. Okay, let's move you. So if you are here, you can still do a burst shot. Alright, so you're dead. Let's get a scope shot at you. 31% chance and done. Mission complete. All right, we did take our first loss there, so that will be interesting. Alrighty, so we have a couple injuries here. Interesting, so it does look like the injuries are uh, in relation to the amount that the soldier was injured. So unfortunately, Yuki Fujikawa was killed, our grenadier. Uh, however, we did get troops improving their abilities and so that's something i'll talk about here we, we are going to call the call the episode here very shortly um, but we are going to be looking at a couple things here sorry oh ivanova got a medal suffer more than 30 percent or 30 hp of damage during a single combat mission the award of a medal will grant soldier one plus to all attributes very fun okay so you are heavily wounded all righty Either way, let's go ahead and take, get our guy back here, and we can now assign research projects. So, aerial warfare, combat vehicles, and autopsy. We'll start with the autopsy. Um, oh, situation analysis is two hours left, but okay. Either way, we'll work with that in a minute. But uh, what I wanted to show you guys is the, let's see, maybe it's on the armory side of things. So, yes. Uh, all of these abilities can be improved. So each ability has a certain set of actions that contribute to progress points. And, or your progress, I guess, would, would be the better definition of it that are represented by progress points. So for every 1,000 progress points you get, you gain one skill point. Now that's really, really valuable. However, it does have diminishing returns and it re the reason it has diminishing returns is because the more skill points you get the more it takes to get there. so the game has been very very clear that it is very good to have high base skill units and i have a feeling that based on how this game is built and, and the fact that you can lose a guy in in one turn without any warning uh, that it's going to be a high turnover game so we definitely want to keep all of our troops as healthy as possible but it's very, very possible that they're going to take some damage and end up going down. So we'll just need to keep working on this. We'll keep building. Uh, we'll keep improving our troops, our base, and uh, our knowledge of the game. Anywho, guys, I think that's going to be all for this very first episode. I do want to thank you for checking this out. It's a fun game. It looks it looks interesting. I like the, the concept really, really well. And I, I look forward to playing it more. Anyway, guys, I hope you had a great day. Thank you so much for watching again, and we'll check you out next time. Bye-bye.